All right, YouTube, today we're gonna take a look at a block which is hanging from the end of a beam. Now, the beam is held up partially by a wall or a pin on a wall and partially by a cable. And in this problem, we're gonna work out both the tension in the cable as well as how hard this little pin is pushing on the left side of this beam. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this problem, but what I find is the simplest is to go through and start this problem by looking at what might happen if we were to simply cut the string. You see, if we were to cut the string, everything would just fall downward or rotate around this pin. And it's that rotation that the cable is preventing. So we're gonna start by looking at the sum of all torques around this pin. So in order for this beam and this block to remain static, we need the sum of all torques around this point, as well as any other point, to equal zero. So we're gonna start by looking at how each force produces a torque around this point. Now there's actually four forces in this problem. The first being the force by the wall, the next being the tension of the cable, and the last two being the weight or force by gravity on each of these objects. Now you'll remember, torque is given by the equation fr sine theta. So all we're gonna do is take a look at each force to see how it contributes to the total torque acting around this pin. So starting at the force by the wall, there's gonna be a force by the wall acting at a distance from the pin of zero. And that means the force by the wall is producing no torque around this point. Moving to our 10 Newton force acting in the middle of this beam. There's gonna be 10 Newtons acting at a radius of one meter. And realize this force is straight down, so it's gonna be at a right angle to the radius vector. So that means we're gonna be dealing with an angle of 90 degrees between the force vector and the radius vector. Sine of 90 works out to be one. Next, we have our 50 Newton force acting at a radius of two meters. And again, this force is acting straight down, so it's at a right angle to the beam. And last, we have this tension by the string. Tension is gonna be some unknown value T. It's acting at a radius of two meters. And there's gonna be some angle between this cable and the beam. And we're just gonna say that angle is 30 degrees. And this isn't something that you'd magically figure out just by looking at the picture. Uh, this is something that I should have written down when I made the whole drawing, but I forgot. Sorry, YouTube. So looking at this entire function, the only thing we don't know here is T, the tension in the cable. And we find the tension in the cable is 110 Newtons. So now that we know the total tension in the cable, we need to turn our attention to the force by the wall. The issue being, we can't use torque to solve for the force at the wall here. So what we're gonna need to do is look at our other conditions for static equilibrium. That is looking at the sum of all forces within any axis. I'm gonna start by looking at the sum of all forces in the y-axis. Now, if we wanna keep this beam from moving vertically, the sum of all forces in the y-axis needs to equal zero. Now it's clear we have two forces down, but we also have two forces which are acting at least somewhat upward. And we need to be careful with our positives and negatives when looking at the sum of all forces here. So I'm gonna go ahead and say that up. So we're gonna say up and to the right are the positive direction in this problem. So looking first at the force by the wall. The force by the wall is not entirely upward. It's up and at an angle. So it has a vertical component. We're gonna call that the force by the wall in the y-axis. So there's that force by the wall in the y-axis plus this 10 Newton force, which is acting downward. So that's gonna be 10 Newtons in the negative direction. There's this 50 Newton force downward. This can be 50 Newtons in the negative direction. And last, there's going to be the tension in the string, which is acting partially upward. Just like this force was broken up to, into its components, this force can be broken up into its components. So we'll call that vertical component of tension Ty. Now realize, this vertical component of tension is something we can solve for. Because we know the magnitude of the tension force, that's 110 newtons, as well as this angle, 
we can solve for that vertical component. And that's gonna allow us to solve for the vertical component of force by the wall. Now realize this isn't the total force by the wall, this is simply the vertical component of this force which is up and to the right. So in order to solve for the total force by the wall, we're gonna to need to solve for this horizontal component of this force by the wall, which we'll call the force by the wall in the x direction. Now realize, just like the sum of all forces in the y axis added up to zero, the sum of all forces in the x axis is also gonna add up to zero. Now there's only two forces acting horizontally on this beam, the force by the wall and the tension force. These other two forces are directed straight down. So to the right, we're gonna have the force by the wall in the x direction. And to the left, we're gonna have the horizontal component of the tension. We'll call that Tx. T in the x direction is to the left, so it's negative. And just like we did in the y axis, we're gonna be able to expand out T in the x axis. And we find the force by the wall in the x direction is 95.2 newtons. So to solve for the total force by the wall, we're simply going to combine these two forces using the Pythagorean theorem. And we find the force by the wall is 95.3 newtons. Now since we're here, we're also gonna solve for the direction of this force by the wall. And that's gonna again involve the two components of the force by the wall. Except rather than using the Pythagorean theorem like we did here, we're gonna take a look at the inverse tangent of these two in order to solve for the angle. And we find the angle of the force by the wall relative to the horizontal is three degrees. So this is how we go through and solve for the forces acting on this beam which is suspended by a cable. I hope you found this useful and on that note, that's all for now.